<laughs> joined now by a member of our BTT family and crew, one of our early season guests, Jimmy Corderas. Jimmy, we're just talking about it here on the episode, and I thought there's nobody better to go to than to you. When Damian Priest doesn't kick out in that match at Money in the Bank and then everything falls apart, all the reaction, it's not about what happened with CM Punk and Drew. It was about that missed spot. Now, from a referee's perspective, what could he have done? To be completely honest with you, Coach, there's really nothing more he could have done than count three. Because like you said, if he doesn't count that three, it was so egregious, that's the only thing people are going to remember. And yes, I understand he did the wrong thing for the right reason, if that makes any mm -hmm. kind of sense. Yes, we understand what the plan was going after that. They wanted it to be a kind of surprise. He comes to cash in turn the match into a three-way so that when Punk does eventually come down to beat the living crap out of Drew, it's no disqualification. It makes sense. And he's getting his retribution for what happened a couple of weeks ago. And then they can go into the proper finish and Damian Priest retains his title. That being said, again, what would I have done? Yeah. Man, you know, it's easy for me to Monday morning quarterback, but at the same time, in a spot like that, you got to count three. You know, here, here's the thing, Jimmy, because Vince always taught us as – so I'm having the match and, and you're refereeing one of my matches – that we have to protect you, the referee, so you don't look like an idiot. And I don't even know the kid. But mm. I felt horrible for him because yes. it's just a split second. You know, and that late in the match, you know it's going to be a late kick out. So it's one, two, and then you get to here and he kicks out and the – oh! And either he forgot or whatever – so I don't necessarily fault him because it had to happen so fast. What do you think happened when they all went back through the curtain and you all get together after the match and discuss? What do you think that conversation was like? I think it's a lot different from the old regime, as you know, because uh, Hunter's a little more laid back. Yes, he probably was, oh, my God, what happened there? But at the same time, probably took pulled uh, Rod Zapata, who's the referee in that one, probably mm -hmm. pulled him and everybody to the side and asked what happened there. Tell me why you did this. Tell me why you didn't count. And I'm sure Rod's answer was probably, you know what? Because if I did count three, that's going to screw up everything that's supposed to happen afterwards. And we have to readjust. And you can't reset that right. and put that wheel back into motion, if that makes any kind of sense. Now we have to call it on the fly. You have to, like, uh, call it out there, as they say, brother. And and it's, it's hard to do. You've got somebody in your ear trying to tell you what to do. Somebody's tr communicated to the boys and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I think they're a little more forgiving for mishaps like that than they were back. Because, you know, you know how it was, coach. If you oh screwed God. up and you, you walked into, you dreaded walking into Gorilla after something like that. I, I wouldn't have walked in. I would have walked around mm -hmm. and I would have walked back that. There's no way I would have walked back through Gorilla. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Side ramp, side ramp for sure. <laughs> but that's so, because oh, – sorry, go ahead. No, no I was going to say, so I, th I thought about this, and two, two things they could have done because Triple H was very classy in the, the post-event press conference, mm -hmm. which tells me they're not even going to address it moving forward. Right. Because to me, you could have done where the referee was on the take with one of those guys. You could have had Drew – I thought it was a horrible cash-in by Drew anyway, to be honest. Mm -hmm. well, I thought it was kind of a waste. But you could have had – Drew and then now sets the champion if he counts three they go at it CM Punk coming down the only person on the outside looking in would have been Damian Priest but then you could have used a judgment day storyline where Finn Balor makes fun of him for losing and you could have still had that what what did you think could have happened actually now that you did that now that you said that you got my wheels turning because I like the fantasy book sometimes as you know <laughs> what if you say the referee was on the take but who paid him off Maybe it was the guys from Judgment Day because they were having issues with with Finn Bal uh, with uh, Damian Priest, and they wanted him out as leader. You remember that last look from Finn when he walked out to the yes. thing, and it was like, "Where is Finn going to?" I thought Finn was going to somehow get involved, and that's the beauty of the business, right, Jimmy? That you don't mm -hmm. know which guys could be coming down, and that's what I wanted to know. But instead. Everybody's talking about the botch instead of what it could have been a magical, magical thing. And it still could have been that. And yeah, you could and have pivoted. Could. We've seen a lot of times where things didn't happen the right way, haven't we? Oh, it happens all the time. It's, you know, it's an error. Errors happen everywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's wrestling, whether you're do, shooting a movie. That's why in movies it's, it's better. It's not live. You can, okay, everybody, cut, reset, 
go to first position and that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But in wrestling, it's live 52 weeks a year. There's very little room for any error. Like you can cover some stuff up and some things like that, like we saw on Sunday. That one you can't cover up because people, especially with the negativity you see online now, everybody's looking for something to to, mm-hmm. to bash and say, look, gotcha. That sucked. That's a, I hate the word botch. The, everybody that uses that word botch, I want to just take their phone and slap them with it because yeah. it's, you know, it's mistakes, mishaps. They happen in every, in every walk of life, in every, any job you do, mistakes happen. And that's what this was. And again, I don't put it all on Rod because Rod did what he thought he had to do to save that thing. But again, like you said, everybody's going to remember this. And Rod did the wrong thing for the right reasons. And if, if I could for a second there, uh, one thing that I noticed when they were going into the finish, and then I watched it back because I wanted to make sure that I saw it correctly, mm-hmm. is the whatever it was, a Death Valley driver or whatever Seth hit uh, Damien with uh, going into that pinfall attempt. Priest's eyes, he's, his head was turned towards the ramp, but there was a different, it wasn't like, it felt like he wasn't there. And there was a, Bubba mentioned this on Busted Open. He noticed his fingers. There's a kind of a tell with the hands because you can't, uh, they, do you know, they do this. Yeah, they do that yeah. a little bit. But I noticed his eyes and they were looking away. And after Rod didn't count three, he kind of turned his head up to Seth. It almost looked like, I'm not a lip reader, but it kind of looked like he was saying like, like what what happened? Like he blanked out for a second there. So maybe so he got maybe a finger or a, a, a quick knockout and then he came back. Right. Also, Seth Rollins, he he yelled F something at the referee. So what yeah. I hope doesn't happen, because, Jimmy, if this would have happened back when Vince was sitting through the curtain, they when you get a big spot like that as a referee, that's a big deal for you guys. And yeah. to be in a position where there's so many what I call a high leverage spot where this has to happen for this to make sense, for that to make sense, for that to happen. Mm-hmm. And when something goes wrong, they're always looking to blame somebody. Do you feel like maybe, even though I don't blame him, that this might cost him some big-time opportunities moving forward? Uh, I'm afraid that it might for the short term, at least, minimum for the short term. But down the road, you know, he, he's a good referee. He'll get he'll get his stuff back. It's just he what he has to do is get it out of his own head. If he's anything like I am, and I know Rod, uh, not very well, but I know him. Mm-hmm. Me, I was my own worst enemy. If something like that would have happened, it would have been festering inside for a long time. It would have it, it, tough to get it out of your head. Like, I can't believe I did that. I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to critiquing. I'll watch matches back that I worked. And if something went wrong, I'll watch it back and like, damn, I should have done this. And I knew better. Why wouldn't I do something like that? I and again, know. like I said, Monday morning quarterbacking is easy. But when you're in that spot and you've got a split second to make a decision, man, regardless of what you do, Regardless of what you do, somebody's going to be hot. No doubt about it. No, it's going to be fascinating. I hate when stuff like that happens, especially on a night where there was so much positivity going on. What is that, sir? What are you holding there? Well, you mentioned a time back in the day where we were given the edict that you don't, if somebody doesn't kick out, you count three, you position yourself where you can see both shoulders. And if you can't see both shoulders, you do not count. And Vince even told us, straight, dead straight to all our faces. I don't care if you're blocking the hard camera. There's five other cameras that can get the shot. You make right. sure you're in position to see both shoulders or you don't count. And if they don't kick out, you count. I remember when he said that. So that what you have right there, what year was that made in? Uh, I want to say, darn, maybe 05 or something like that. Do you like think that. they have one today? Do you think the refs I, have one today? I, I really couldn't tell you. <laughs> but this was, I don't know who made it up, but if you look through it, it has all the different... I'll give you the table of contents really quick. Standard match, victory by pinfall, victory by submission, victory by countout, disqualification, gorilla position, even tells you about the gorilla position, and types wow. of matches. The rules for all the types of matches. Everybody just thinks there's just one, two, three, that it's a very simple business. There are so many different things that go into it at the highest level. And yeah. that's what needs to be known. This is the highest level. You can't have these things happen very often or all of a sudden the credibility to the fans is shot that's mm-hmm. how important this truly is oh. there but you got to have little things that uh, keep in mind you know because uh, i know you don't want to go in thinking ne- negatively to the match because you're thinking of the spot you know what's coming up you know it's going to be a real close false finish it wouldn't be a bad idea if the referee just went to the guys hey before we get to this thing 
if in case something goes wrong, do we have a plan B? Oh. And one of, one of the other things that I like to do is if it's going to be a close false finish and I don't think the guy's going to kick, I yell kick, kick out. Because the crowd's oh, so loud, they're not going to hear you anyway. No. And yeah. even, if the, even if the camera hears me, if they pick it up audio, I don't care. <laughs> Go ahead. It's better than the alternative. Yeah, alternative. exactly. All right, before we let you get out of here, I know you had a big episode of your award-winning uh, podcast. Uh, educate the people a little bit. Your guest this week and what you talked about. Oh, our guest this week is none other than you, Coach. And we talked about a lot of things. And you know what? Let them tune in to find out. I brought up some stuff from the past. I like it. I like it. But he's a part That's of it. our crew as well. He is uh, yeah. the referee extraordinaire. You got it right from the horse's mouth. The great Jimmy Corderas. I'm the coach. Of course, tune in every single week to Behind the Turnbuckle for anything storylines, shows. And next Monday night, our first ever Raw recap show live around 11, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Jimmy, you're the man. Talk to you soon. You got it, my friend. Love you, buddy.